Welcome back to Advancing with Watercolor. And we're painting on the harbor today in a town called Manchester by the Sea, up in uh, the North Shore, just above Boston. And we're going to be talking about uh, watercolor plan and <clears throat> some of the things that go into um, the watercolor plan, the sort of considerations that we need to take into account. But first, I want to show you that it's not all fun and games, that there's some very hard work involved in preparation for any watercolor outing. This is a famous spot in Gloucester, which is above Manchester by the Sea, called George's. And, uh, well, we need to build up our strength, and we have. We're all psyched, and we're ready to go with a full stomach. But I wanted to give you a glimpse into the seldom seed side of uh, the Plan Air Painter. This is how we prepare with a good breakfast. And then we're on location. This is the harbor, a glimpse of the harbor, and you can see that it's uh, a pretty calm day. Uh, we are sort of lucky because they had forecast thunderstorms exactly the hours that we are supposed to be painting. I told my crew that um, early in the morning I saw a little window and I said let's go for it. As soon as I made the announcement I heard a large thunder clap in the sky and made me a little nervous but I decided to go for it anyway and we prevailed. We had a great, great day. This is the scene that I am painting. In fact you can actually see the painting on my easel very calm day and I'm focusing on uh, reflections. You can tell that quite a bit was edited out, a lot of the small boats, uh, some of the distance things were made simple. Anyway, we're going to recreate this painting and I'm going to use it as an opportunity to talk about a watercolor plan. Because uh, with watercolor we have to make adjustments. We can't paint the same way every time, especially when we're out of doors and we have some weather. Today we had a lot of humidity in the air and <clears throat> humidity in the air makes the dry time very, very slow to the point where we almost have to consider doing the watercolor uh, in one go, trying to get it right in one go without much layering. Uh, this particular method is called a la prima, in the first go and there's some advantages to that. Uh, it really concentrates the mind and really um, kind of promotes a, a decision making that you normally don't have and it's a very good exercise. Um, and today the conditions are kind of dictating that we do this painting without returning to it too much. Um, I'm painting this now in the studio to kind of recreate the process that I used so that you can see you know how things developed in the field. What I'm doing is I'm giving a little bit of a an under not an under coat but I'm painting the water surface first because I want to return with some hard reflections. So this is the if any place is going to dry I want this water area to dry first so that I can return with <clears throat> with a brush and um, build in some hard edge reflections. Everything else is being done sort of wet on wet. You notice I just placed a gray tone in the sky and put in some blues to kind of create a, the feeling of descending clouds. And this area is still wet. So what I'm doing now is um, adding trees into that wet area. And you can tell it's the edges are softening out we're getting a nice uh, distance as a result. We're getting the feeling of distance because the color is dissolving into that wet area. Uh, the, the sky I brought right down to the roof lines of some distant storage units or fish houses. I'm not sure what they are. But uh, I'm going to keep those white for the moment. So it's been so far so f pretty easy to build this up. Sky, then on top of that uh, the greenery, the distant greenery, which I wanted to really have fade off into the distance if possible. And uh, 
so I've still got dry paper below the the rooftops and I can easily place some tone, some color, some grays uh, into this area. And that's what I'm doing now. Controlling the edge, you can tell I'm getting some hard edges there. <clears throat> and um, to get back to the idea of a watercolor plan, uh, as soon as we arrive on location uh, with watercolor, we kind of make a judgment. Uh, first of all, what are we going to paint? Where are we going to stand? Some good things to keep in mind uh, that I discussed a little bit last week are standing in shade. Um, you don't necessarily have to face your subject. That might sound odd to you, but uh, recently I've been just kind of following uh, what I'm given in the field. What that means is sometimes uh, I prefer to have a shady, uh, cool area, and it's not necessarily facing the angle that I want for my subject. So I'll do my drawing from that angle, then I'll return to my easel, which is in the shade. It might be uh, 45 degrees from the subject, or I might not have it in front of me at all. In which case, um, every glance that I make towards my subject is necessary. I'm looking more at my painting, not distracted by the constant movement of the head up and down to measure against my subject. I can really concentrate on the painting. This makes for um, actually a, a more direct and more focused approach to the painting. But then one of the things that we face after setting ourselves up is, is our watercolor plan. We have options. We can do uh, a plan that involves layers. Last week's plan uh, for me was more of a layered approach where we painted at Pierce Park and I could place a layer of warm light colors followed by some darker richer hues to define the shadows uh, and build up the painting in terms of two or three layers and that way we can take advantage of an underpainting and create a feeling of uh, a glowing color coming through another color we can arrive at a very a uh, dramatic and hard-edged painting this way where we're painting strong shadows. So, uh, and another variation, another uh, consideration is, is always the weather. If it's going to be damp like it is today, you don't want to have to wait and wait and wait for something to dry. You want to be able to keep moving. This, in this case, we work with... Um, the a la prima method, which means we're trying to paint basically from top down and um, trying to get it right in the first go, trying to nail the color or trying to nail the value. In today's scenario, it's mostly broken hues, grays, without a strong concentration of color. Um, so that is conducive to working in the a la prima method where we're <clears throat> painting without any intention to go back and layer. In this case, I did lay in the water first so that I could return with hard edge reflections. Sometimes we don't have that option either. If it's very, very damp or threatening rain, we have to work quickly and we have to consider that in our watercolor plan. Other things that may come into the watercolor plan is our, uh, how we're going to build up the image from uh, either big shapes to small shapes, which is a preferred method for me, or are we going to do it uh, kind of almost like a puzzle and then stitch it together at the end? There's all sorts of uh, methods, and probably if you look at different watercolor artists, you'd, you'll see that each one works a different way. If we're working solely in the studio, that's not... Uh, a, f a major consideration. I still like to consider the plan, how I'm going to build up the painting, but it's not as a, um, how do I say, it's not going to limit you the way weather does. Weather can really limit what you're able to do, how much time you have to do it, and how you build up the watercolor. So it's really worth it to spend 
a good, you know, five to ten minutes, almost going through the painting in your head. And doing it this way will give you an idea of what to expect. Um, rather, this is preferred to just uh, doing your drawing, picking up your watercolors and starting to paint. If you pause for five to ten minutes and think about the stages, think about how you're going to approach the watercolor, make a rough plan because a plan, a good plan always accommodates uh, the unexpected. There's some things that happen that you would like to take advantage of, so the plan always has flexibility, I believe. And once you've formulated a plan, as I did today, I wanted to paint the reflections, hard reflections. In fact, the title of this piece, before I even started the painting, was Reflections on the Harbor. And so the reflections play a large role, and I wanted to do hard edge reflections, which means I have to have a dry surface to work on. That was my reason for painting the water first. It wasn't just because it was a, a lighter hue. In any case, you can tell I've been working from the top down to um, connect these mid-tones, leaving a lot of whites here and there um, to define edges, to define surfaces that are facing towards the sky, to break up a dark area. I'm using these, these white shapes. Um, they're an important part of the painting, and uh, since I'm work on, working on relatively dry paper, I can do that easily. I'm also trying to compartmentalize the painting, which means I'm thinking of small areas, finishing small areas in the time I have, and then moving on to another small area and working that area until it's relatively finished, and so on. And this way I feel I can um, finish a certain section to a degree and then move on and forget about that section and concentrate again on uh, the section that I'm working on. So this, mentally, this is a, uh, a way to give yourself some relief. You don't have to juggle the whole painting at once. You can do it in, in uh, smaller areas, areas that are still wet and manageable. Well, my reflection turned out kind of ugly but it's there, and it's uh, a hard edge reflection, so we'll live with it. Uh, I'm extending now the, the reflection of the figures and the, the uh, pier that they're walking on, trying to give them a, a, a strong presence in the painting. In fact, this will probably end up being the focal area, the, the prow of the boat, the two figures and what they're doing. And all that stuff in the background is going to recede. This is uh, my goal eventually, and it involves, uh, you know, finishing these sections up one by one, and then um, leaving some room for adjustments. I'm going to have to make some adjustments in the background. I can tell already. I'm painting the figures as silhouettes. Um, I don't believe that they'll remain this way, but they will um, have a dark presence. There'll be some brighter colors added to give them a bit of uh, liveliness and, uh, and uh, fun, but they will still remain rather dark in the context of the painting. This uh, reflection that I just painted was improvised. There was no such reflection, but I felt that the side of the painting was a little weak, uh, that my eye wanted to travel out to the right this is a compositional decision to <clears throat> force the eye back in towards my center of interest to give more clarity around the figures and the peak of the boat so that the center of interest reads first and then the eye kind of moves around the painting. This is um, a strategy or, let's say, a, a compensation, something that it uh, needed to be done to make it a little more of a readable image adding a bit of tone and a bit of texture to the, the boards that form the pier. And uh, some more details here and there. 
as we are painting, we're watching our, not radar, but we have an app on the phone that will give us an idea of what's coming and when. And there were, <laughs> there were literally three or four small pockets of storms that were moving on either side of us, somehow avoiding us. Maybe this is uh, the watercolor gods looking down on us and giving us a break, saying, well, you deserve a little break. You came out on a, on a stormy day. You took a chance. We're going to reward you. And they did give us a nice day. It was um, very quiet because I think a lot of people had um, probably correctly assumed that it was going to get pretty ugly later on. And they just stayed inside, uh, which gave us even... Uh, I would say a more calm environment to work in. There was there was not much going on. There were certainly no figures moving about the pier as I was working. Uh, it was a very quiet scene, and the figures were placed to give a feeling of activity. Look what I'm doing here. This is an important technique. You see how I'm blurring the background with just a little bit of water, knocking back the whites that were on the rooftops and um, blurring some of the edges of the greenery. This is designed to push back against that uh, background area. At the same time, we get even more clarity in our center of interest. It reads even more clearly. So this is a, a technique. Uh, if the painting is mm, sort of dried, you can take a wet brush not too wet, and drag it over some areas and uh, simply loosen some of the paint and create a few grays that soften that distance. And if you compare it now to the hard edges and bright whites in the boat, we've really achieved uh, a nice space uh, between the boat and the distance. Well, the painting is finished pretty much. Uh, I'll add some highlights uh, to the figures. I'll add some highlights uh, to the top of the boat and uh, a line for the boat, uh, this and that to just give it, but you know basically the painting was completed. And we're going to compare it to the previous painting, the one that was done on site. You'll see that the boat reads very well. Same sort of stuff in the distance. Uh, the reflections, I feel, a little more successful in this painting. Definitely the light feels accurate to me. It was very, very soft and a wet day, and that light is coming through. So that's uh, what I have to say about a watercolor plan. I want to um, move to a, another subject or another uh, motif and do sort of a spontaneous painting. This is um, the same harbor. Manchester by the Sea, and much like I did last week, at the, at the conclusion of last week, I did a small black and white painting uh, with a lot of dry brush, trying to be spontaneous, trying to find some abstract qualities in my subject, and I'm doing the same thing here. My intention here is to work, uh, since it was a very humid day and we're working with water, um, with more of a wet on wet approach. And what you see me doing now is just loosely placing some light grays which are representative of a collection of boats on the water. And uh, as long as I can see those I can really start to uh, play with the, with the deep grays when I move wet into wet. And what I'm doing now is adding a bit of water to the area just above the boats so that I can paint the trees very quickly and spontaneously. This sort of exercise, and I consider it an exercise, is really um, a joy to do. After you've kind of labored over a painting um, in the field, you've, you've worked hard to achieve you know, something uh, that's descriptive and accurate, um, it's fun to do something that's a little more free, something where you can maybe concentrate on the more abstract qualities of your motif, or you can concentrate more on the freshness and spontaneity of the media, 
you can concentrate more on brushwork, things that are uh, a part of every painting, but you can, um, in a sense, play with these more uh, when you're doing sort of an improvisation like this. Uh, same thing on the bottom, I'm wetting the whole bottom and then going to play with the reflections, the long reflections, and bring them right up to the boats, uh, do some things with the boats later on, but I wanted to explore this idea of a, a very wet, humid day, uh, wet water, long reflections, boats in a calm um, kind of collection near the far shore, and uh, see what happens. So I'm trying to be very abstract about this. In fact, there was no real drawing with pencil. Rather, I created a few shapes and am now working around those shapes to uh, create an interesting pattern of lights and darks, a feeling of reflections, and a feeling of the nature of water, where we have some transformations uh, from dark to light, and um, uh, I guess primarily thinking about the beauty of the shapes. These sorts of paintings, the one I did last week, came out very quickly, spontaneously. Uh, this one too, after um, painting a, a longer painting of maybe an hour, hour and 15 minutes, I'm able to do this sort of work in literally a third of the time. And that uh, timing aspect is important too. I'm not really allowing myself to linger very much with the details. I'm trying to move through the painting and create the, the big masses and then define the uh, smaller shapes and accents as they as they happen in the painting. So I'm continuing to extend this uh, mid medium gray to the right in the form of boats and uh, reflections and at the same time trying to keep an integrity to those white shapes that are breaking up the large dark mass of trees and reflection. So uh, there's really no even looking at the image at this point, I took a, a little photo and I did think about that as I was placing the boats and I had an idea for the trees and I'm simply pursuing that as I build up these shapes. At this stage, it's you can almost see the painting in its entirety. I do anticipate to do uh, some strong verticals in the form of uh, the mast to connect the whites of the boats below to the white above. But I can recommend this exercise for everyone. I think uh, you'll get a, a different sensation after doing a long painting to give yourself half an hour, maybe a smaller sheet, and do a very quick painting, giving yourself, you know, 20 to 30 minutes. That sort of time constraint does sometimes uh, maybe feel a little unnecessary, like why do I need to do that? But uh, what it does is it concentrates the mind and certainly asks you to work in a sort of shorthand, um, not uh, lingering for any length of time on details or on uh, superfluous areas, but rather concentrating on the big areas and certainly the, the major idea that you wish to project. Now well, here I am getting a little bitsy. What I need to do is just move on think about the water surface again, but we'll address that shortly. Let's place some darks while it's still wet and why we can take advantage of this uh, condition of the paper. While it's wet, we can do a lot of blending. We can add darks and just sort of blend them into the surface. We can refine the shapes of boats. 
and so on. Well, at this point, the, the painting is nearly finished. I am going to be putting some masks on, but first I want to just uh, loosely paint the water surface once more to create a, a graded wash. And I'm starting with just a bit of toned water across the whole uh, lower two-thirds of the painting to kind of loosen up that reflection area and now painting more gray on top of it to get a feeling of a a graded wash a little bit darker towards the front and concentrate the attention or concentrate the image so that we look more towards those light areas uh, in the middle of the painting. It's starting to have that misty quality. Here's the finished piece. I've added the masks with a bit of white and you see how they push back against the distant trees give us a feeling of a gathering of boats on a very wet and misty day so you got uh, two things today you got a watercolor plan and um, a way to finish your painting session with an improvisation I hope it was helpful <laughs>